We're here at St. Paul's Church. It's the Actors Church in London with plaques to memorialize many famous actors. And I'm here with Ellen Clark King, our former vice dean. We're, it's like a family reunion here in London. We're so grateful to see her. Her office looks beautiful. Her responsibility seems so important too. And we're really glad to see you, Ellen. Thank you. Yay, it's lovely to see you. I know, it's great. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're having a chance to visit, like I've dreamed about for so long. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. You know, you've been here and you've been working with students and staff, and I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about what you've learned about faith or religious life and culture um, in this new setting and in this new place. I think um, one of the things I realize is how important faith is to meaning and purpose and values. So even students and staff who don't identify as having any particular faith actually have a real strong commitment to living out of their best selves. And for them, that's sort of where faith lies. So trying to find a way into that and um, allowing sort of my God sense to come out in ways that make sense to people who don't use theological language is really interesting. Yeah, I, th I think it would take a tremendous amount of creativity to figure out how to speak in a language that nor normal and modern people use. Yeah. Yeah, and as much to the staff as the students, we'll often find that some of the students, we have a lot of um, Islamic students. It's one of the most diverse student bodies in the UK. And so a lot of the students would um, commit to a faith in a way a lot of the staff don't. It's so interesting, I can imagine. I mean, it's the way that the times are changing too. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things I've been thinking so much about is just, you know, this COVID, a, a million Americans died of, of the disease, the pandemic, yeah. and maybe a half million more in, in related deaths. Um, and so it's been a terrible time of tragedy. And I wonder if you yeah. can talk a little bit about what that felt like here in, in, in England. I think it was, it was very similar. The lens I've been seeing it through is the disruption, particularly to young lives and people you know, those precious years when you're just exploring who you are and moving on from home and into your own identity, and to have that disrupted has been really difficult for, for people to live with. And there hasn't been, I don't think, enough sort of recognition of the amount of grief that people have gone through, whether they've lost somebody they know or just the grief for all the things they haven't been able to do. And so I think a lot of people are carrying that grief within them and it comes out sometimes as anger or anxiety and uncertainty. And so it's, uh, yeah, I think we're still definitely living through a COVID age. Yeah, I, that's one of the things I'm most disappointed about in our ministry at Grace Cathedral is that I keep waiting for us to have the great COVID memorial or some way of just of, of addressing that grief in our city. And, and it just it just seems like we, it's hard to know when the right moment to have that is. Yeah, I agree. And it's it's been hard. And we had a sort of small memorial in Kings, but it didn't sort of bring in hundreds of people. There's a memorial wall by St. Thomas's, which is one of our hospitals, where people have put up hearts and the names of people that they've lost. And I think for a lot of people, that's the sort of place where they go to when they want to feel solidarity with other people who are mourning through this. Yeah, we, we went by and it was very moving for us to just read the inscriptions on yeah. each of the hearts and to think of that heart as a life. And each, after we were seeing them, every person who came by just th thought of the story that they carry. Yeah. You know, um, one of the biggest questions I have for you, too, is just how do you see Grace Cathedral differently? I mean, there is no one who understood it better than you during the moment that you were there. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, things have changed there, certainly. But I wonder how those years look to you now as you look back on them. That's a really interesting question. I think one of the things I'm very aware of is that I would not have been ready to take on this job here without the time at Grace Cathedral. And all I learned there about sort of managing a complex institution, leading people and being allowed to lead by you. And it's prepared me to, to take on a riskier, harder role. And there are still so many people, high people, that I love and miss and wish I could see. So it was sad to leave Grace as well during COVID and not be able to give you all a hug and tell you how much I love you. And that was the saddest thing for me is that it was like saying goodbye in Laurie's backyard instead yeah. of having this huge church service where everyone could really tell you what, 
what you meant to them. And I could tell them too. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it was hard. It was a hard goodbye for sure. But yeah. I mean, here, you're, you, there are 35,000 students in your college that you're responsible for and thousands of staff members. Yeah. And then your place in the, in the community in the city of London and in the world. It, it's such a tremendous amount of responsibility. We're all so proud of what you're doing here. So oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, that's it for more good news today. Thanks for watching. My name is Malcolm Clemens-Young. I'm the Dean of Grace Cathedral in San Francisco, California.